morning whiskey lovers and welcome to another one of Mark's Whiskey Ramblings and today we are going to Leuven to visit one of the three leading whiskey festivals in Belgium, Spirits in the Sky. There will be lots to see and even more to taste but I also will be attending a couple of master classes and who knows we might even run into a few famous whiskey people. For example Andrew Symington from Edward Dower Distillery and Signatory will be there but also Dominic Bouchard which you know as the, the, the man behind Malts of Scotland and Belgium and also who has his own label The Whiskey Man. Also there is Richard Patterson the nose from uh, White and Mackay so it's going to be quite an adventure. Please join me. In less than two hours the train delivered me from my neck of the woods in Ghent to the student city of Leuven close to Brussels for the festival. I arrived an hour before the opening of the show together with around 20 other whiskey enthusiasts and bloggers who were invited by the organizer for a unique experiment. We were to taste six whiskies blind and score them. The goal was to show how personal scoring really is and the experiment pointed that out. Some whiskies got very similar scores a Springbank 1996 and a Glenmorangie in Missouri Oak, one whiskey scored consistently high, the Redbreast 15 cask strength, while one whiskey, a peated Kilhoman single sherry cask, got both very high but also very low scores. Now to thank us for participating, the organizers treated us to a port tasting, and that proved to, to be a cracker session. We tasted eight ports from Graham's, including a 69 single harvest Tony port, and the 60 year old 1952 single harvest Tony port that was bottled to commemorate the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II. An absolutely stunning port for a fraction of the price of a whiskey of the same age. After a quick lunch, I attended my first master class of the day, hosted by Gordon Dundas. He started off his Beaumont uh, class by showing us a little promotional video. Let's have a look together. So if we can just ask Stefan to hit the lights. We're going to show you a little video while you're drinking this perfect 12 year old. It just epitomizes what we're about. Uh, enjoy this as we take you to Ireland.
we tasted some great Beaumont, including the Cracker Maltman selection. The 1985 limited edition was a bit perfumey to my taste, though. I conned Gordon out of a sample of New Make Spirit as well. I had some time to visit the show proper then and ran into some familiar faces such as Dominic Bookard of The Whiskey Man and of course the fantastic bottlings of Malts of Scotland. The Highland Park Amazing Cask was one of the highlights of the show for me. I also got a chance to, f to chat with Frank McCarthy from Springbank who promptly offered me a dram of the new Long Row 11 year old which was finished on a Cabernet Sauvignon wine cask. But suddenly I was spun around by the owner of Signatory and Yedra Dower Distillery. I recognize you from the internet, we need to talk. Andrew Simington had read some of my less favorable tasting notes and wanted to see if he could win me over by offering me two Balakin, the PT version of Edward Hour. The bourbon cask matured was wonderful, the Bordeaux cask matured not so much, but we hit it off both being candid folk and made a promise to stay in touch. I may not yet be a fan of Edward Hour, but I have a lot of respect for the man. But time was passing quickly and I soon found myself in Jochen Toschen Masterclass, again hosted by my friend Gordon. And although I have these whiskies in my Toschen Man collection, there was a surprise from the warehouse that I did not want to miss. It was the newly launched Ocken 32-year-old 1979 limited edition matured solely on first fill Olorosa sherry casks. What a luscious whisky that turned out to be. So this is, but what I think is pretty unique about this is we've talked about fill levels of casks, first fill, second fill, etc, uh, etc. Et you don't very often see a whisky first fill at this age. I think it's a fair comment. So this is, uh, I mean the colour is, a, oh, come on. Mm. The colour's amazing. 50.5% mm -hmm. alcohol. That's another interesting fact. Bourbon casks. Class ready. Bourbon casks, um, bur whiskey behaves very different in bourbon. This is only matured in sherry casks, first fill only. So um, it's got a strength to it which is quite high for a whiskey of that age. It's amazing to think that I was nine years old when this was coming off the still. That's, yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Buy it here with the yes, you can. Yeah, you can. Oh. Uh, actually, I don't know if you can. You, <laughs> just, you need to speak to Stefan. He's our local. So I was told it was, it was not yet available. I don't think it is actually. No, it's coming, coming out. No, I think it's coming out soon. Yeah. It's coming out soon. Yeah. Yeah. Gordon poured from bottle four of one thousand, and I was able to get my hands on bottle number five, and the hunt for bottle number one is on. Then it was back to the show where I sampled a few more drams, but also collected around 40 samples to try back home in my quiet and trusted whiskey basement. The Spirits in the Sky Festival is an absolute delight for the senses and very well organized as well. I would highly recommend it and I'm looking forward to going back next year. Thanks for all who made this festival what it is. Dramtastic.